Hey folks and welcome to a brand new book talk series. Today's book talk is going to be relatively different. I'm going to be discussing a small entrepreneurial business manual which incorporates ancient Chinese practices into modern day business thinking. This book is a great way for anyone to learn how to navigate their lives in a more professional and ethical manner within the business world, which we usually associate as being cutthroat. The small handbook that I'm about to discuss is called The Six Secret Teachings of Zheng Ziya, and it's written by Frank Romans. Frank Romans is a successful businessman turned author with over 50 years of business acumen. The question that you might be postulating at this moment in time is who on earth is Zheng Ziya? Before I provide some historic exposition on who Zheng Ziya is, let's take a look at the handbook itself. The handbook is not very big at all which means you can read it within a short space of time. The book itself is written in a very user-friendly manner and you can understand it pretty quickly. Although there are six main concepts which Frank Romans very masterfully delineates into plain and simple English, it's fundamentally important that you take your time to understand each concept properly. Otherwise, you may run the risk of absorbing the information in a suboptimal manner. So just be careful. The first of which is the civil strategy. This requires thinking bigger, having your dreams and setting them out and constantly trying to realize them. It's all about giving yourself pep talks and making sure that when you succeed, you succeed, but you also become a leader. This underpins the civil strategy. Secondly is the military strategy. This incorporates an element of benevolence. It's all about outwitting your opponent through persuasion and kindness, and also knowing where you stand in a particular situation, just so you can turn it in your favor. Research is key to master the military strategy, and Zheng Ziya favors getting noticed. Thirdly is the dragon strategy. This is all about organization, leadership, and communication. The dragon strategy requires you to create a cohesive environment, within which all problems and dilemmas can be collectively resolved without much dispute and hostility. The dragon strategy helps create structure and gives you confidence in approaching your tasks in a more confident manner. Communication is that essential thing which either makes you or breaks you. And of course, let's not forget that good communication and great leadership involves you being able to give good advice. Number four is the tiger strategy. This is about equipment, speed, guarding against variables, using human resources and having unity. Being too lax can risk leading to an unproductive environment and Zheng Ziya warns us against this. Fifthly is the leopard strategy. This is all about knowing yourself, your beliefs and your ethics. Having a strong set of values and ethics will ultimately carve your path. Although of course the business world carries a great sense of competition, Zheng Ziya teaches us within the leopard strategy that sometimes it's important to know when to give up the hunt. And finally, there is the dog strategy. This is all about timing, developing leadership and training oneself. Being observant and hardworking fit very well within the dog strategy. And you kind of have to be open-minded to new ideas and new environments. That's what paves the path for more success. Having discussed these six concepts, we can now turn to who Zheng Ziya was. Zheng Ziya, revered in ancient China as the old sage of the East Sea, was known to be a master of a hundred ways. Zheng Ziya was exceptional in military affairs, politics, philosophy, writing, and a plethora of other things. In his early 30s, Zheng Ziya retired to the mountains, where he spent 40 years cultivating his Taoist teachings. At the time, the Shang Dynasty was in a state of conflict and upheaval. It was ruled by the despotic king, Zhou, notorious for his tyrannical reign. After coming down from the mountains, Zheng Ziya moved to the Zhou Kingdom, which was ruled by King Wen, who was reputable for his generosity and virtue. Zheng Ziya yearned to bring harmony to the realm and desired to serve as King Wen's strategist, but climbing to such a position was of course arduous. The historical account goes as follows. Zheng Ziya went fishing along the river of a road which was known to be used by King Wen and patiently awaited for the monarch to pass by. Zheng Ziya sat fishing with a very short fishing line cast roughly three feet above the surface of the water. Zheng Ziya kept reciting the following verse to himself whilst he fished. Only those willing to be caught come to bite my hook. It took Zheng Ziya until he was 80 years old when King Wen finally noticed the elderly man and engaged him in conversation. Zheng Ziya taught King Wen how the world was collectively owned by all and not just by a select few and that kings should govern by benevolent and virtuous means. Impressed and taken by Zheng Ziya's wisdom, compassion and patience, 
King Wen enlisted Zheng Xia as a strategist. Not long after, the Shang dynasty was finally vanquished, and the Zhou dynasty under the guidance of Zheng Xia was established, and it became one of the greatest and longest surviving dynasties in Chinese antiquity. I really admire Zheng Xia, and he's one of my favorite historical figures from Chinese history. Zheng Xia's intelligence and devotion to his objectives is inspirational. His verse, only those willing to be caught, come to bite my hook, sums up life. To me, this means that regardless of how long you wait, only those things that you are destined for will come to you. Thank you all very much for watching my video. It's much appreciated as always. If you want to follow me on Instagram or Twitter, the links to both of my social media are in the description box below. If you also wish to donate to my channel, then feel free to do so. All donations are very much appreciated. Thank you for those as well. I'm going to quickly head off to eat something and I've got miserable work tomorrow. So wish me luck. I'll catch you all in the next episode. Take care, stay safe and goodbye for now.